Join me for days 11 and 12 of my Petit Train du Nord trip, where we follow the Rouge River and we learn some of the history of this beautiful region. This with the world's smallest bicycle camper. I'm very happy with this setup. It rained profusely last night and everything is, has been kept dry. The table and the bench um, and everything on the table. Only thing is I'm going to have to try to work out a way to reduce the sag because uh, that reduces the height inside. I was hoping to get away before the rain, but such is life. Um, it is raining a little bit and I'll have to put up with whatever this road will give me even though it's not ideal riding on this kind of road in the rain with a trailer. I just left Namineng. I'm back on the Petit Train du Nord heading south and the sky is getting brighter. I hope. This part of the trail is pretty rough. Uh, which makes me, uh, well, it slows me down a little bit, but not much. I'm maybe going about 15 to 18 kilometers an hour instead of 20 or 22. It isn't a bad thing to slow down on a nice trail like this. Through the trees, we see the south end of Big Naminang Lake, the lake I was camped on last night. This bridge spans a strait that joins Little Naminang Lake on the right and Big Naminang Lake on the left. This information panel is about 100 meters past that little bridge and this explains what it is. And that bridge used to be a covered bridge. Numerous information panels like this one have been placed along the whole length of the trail. They depict what life was like in this part of the country north of Montreal, considered the north during the 19th century and the first half of the 20th. They tell the story of how the railway allowed colonization, agriculture and forestry to thrive. They're illustrated with vintage photographs of the first structures and buildings, many of which unfortunately have been demolished since then. Here's a nice, very pretty rest stop. Even though August isn't even over, we already see some fall colors coming out. This is a park just next to a crossing of Highway 117, a major road that makes up for the absence of the rail line that has been transformed into this recreational trail, because it runs in the same general direction. It's a busy road because it's the only direct link between Quebec's largest metropolitan region and the abitibi Timiskaming region, 600 kilometers north from here. It forms part of the Trans-Canada Highway, so I didn't expect the multi-use trail to cross the busy highway at ground level. I rode by the town of L'Annonciation and turned off the trail to see what appeared to be a park. It turned out to be a campground smack on the side of the trail, which would have been very practical for me, except that this is one of the many that haven't opened their tent sites this year because of the COVID-19 restrictions. Here's our first glimpse of the Rouge River. The trail passes through some industrial areas as well. Uh, this appears to be a construction materials company. 
and a very ugly storage shed to the right. This is called the Interpretation Center for Migrating Birds. It aims to educate the public about the importance of the protection of natural areas. They say that from the observation deck, we can observe great snow geese, Canada geese, several species of ducks, and a multitude of other birds that find refuge in this natural habitat. The trail goes through the town of Rivière Rouge, a town of about 5,000 people, and I'm stopping here to pick up some masks and food for lunch. A pasta salad bought at the IGA across the street, an apple and some nuts that I have left over will be my lunch for today. Here we're riding along the river but we can hardly see it for a rather thin row of trees. Now I don't know whether we'd really want them to cut the trees down, but it would be nice to see the river. So how can we have both? Well, I guess the way to have both is to ride the river with a canoe or a kayak. There's a rest stop ahead and uh, maybe we'll have a view of the river. I'll stop and see. The Rouge is a very popular river for whitewater enthusiasts. Now just imagine what it looks like on a nice sunny day. This man flagged me down because he wanted to know what I was carrying in the yellow box I was towing behind my bicycle. Another thing about the weather conditions today is that if it were nice and sunny today, there would be many, many people on the trail, walkers and cyclists. There are a lot of sandbanks along the river. A few canoeists on the sandbank over there ran the rapids by weaving through the rocks and they've just landed. There's another group further down who've lit a campfire. Here's a nice rest stop. I had lunch here four years ago it was really good. They offer a very nice menu. I'm going to leave the trail temporarily to go to the village and get some food for tonight. Well, I just stopped at La Belle to pick up some groceries and um, now I'm on the trail and this part of the trail is unpaved but it's on very smooth um, rock dust. We're now riding on a straight portion of the trail. The only straight section, six kilometers long. I've arrived at Camping La Belle et La Rouge. Isn't this wonderful? Smack in the forest.
No big campers and RVs? I think I'm going to be quite comfortable here. It's among the most beautiful privately owned campgrounds that I've been to. This is more like a provincial park or a national park where individual sites are far apart and where they haven't cut down all the trees. So I'm quite happy about my setup here. Um, I'll be able to work at my computer tonight. I'll be able to catch up on emails and um, I'll be able to search for my next campground. I don't know where I'm going tomorrow. So that's the next thing I have to do. On this 11th day, I travel a total of 55 kilometers and you can see the location of this leg of the trip in the orange circle. Seven kilometers were traveled on roads, the red line on the map, and 48 on the trail, the green line. I could have taken a shortcut across the top of the lake, like on this map, and shaved 10 kilometers off my day. But I would have missed 11 kilometers of the trail, and the whole point was to ride the entire Strenzenau. So I'm happy about my decision to go back and ride the road that was under construction the second time and pick up the trail at Neminang. Slept well last night, except I woke up in the middle of the night to go for a leak and it was raining so hard I had to use my bottle. And this morning, uh, little animals had found my bag, my garbage bag. I had forgotten to hang it up in a tree. But fortunately, they didn't get at my food, which is in a safe place. Well, I hope. The weather forecast is for rain all day today, but the next nine days should be sunny. So I'm going to stay here an extra day and leave tomorrow. Before going online to look for a campground for the next day, I had to look at some of the footage I took at the beginning of the trip. This is the reception office. Very rustic. If you're staying here for a few days, you can rent a kayak or a canoe or take a paddling adventure down the river and the campground people will come and pick you up at your point of arrival. When I arrived here to register, I had a bad surprise. Somehow or other, I thought I had reserved a service site and here none of the sites has electricity. However, the owner didn't want to let me down, so he found a 100 foot extension cord, plugged it in at the back of his brother's house, and weaved it through the trees to site number one, which fortunately was unoccupied. Here we have a bonfire pit surrounded by chairs. The wooden structure here houses showers and sinks for washing dishes in. These are the dishwashing stations. And these are the shower stalls. The shower stalls are very well ventilated and qualify as outdoor showers, which means that La Belle and La Rouge didn't have to restrict the number of its facilities due to COVID-19 regulations. What I forgot to show you is uh, the toilet facilities. They are outhouses. But there's one problem with them. They stink so... so. Now that's one of the downsides of this place if you happen to be have if you happen to have a campsite close to the facilities. So I'm heading towards La Belle to pick up some food for my supper. And uh, so this is actually going northward. And just to show you now that the sun, well the sun is sort of out, it's partially out. Uh, we, here we're in a, an agricultural area. These are the Iroquois Falls on Rouge River at the entrance of La Belle Village. 
This little part commemorates the role that Father Labelle played in developing this region. He was involved in the construction of the railway line that we enjoy today for recreation. The purpose was to encourage the area's economic development. One of the objectives was to put an end to the emigration of French Canadians towards New England, where many had found employment in textile mills. In 1888, he was named Deputy Minister of the province's Department of Agriculture and Colonization. On the whole, he was responsible for 5,000 people settling in the Laurentians. I rode around La Belle for a while and then dropped in the little supermarket. I picked up a steak and a can of beer to take back to my campsite for supper. Then I rode the 8 kilometers back to the campground, enjoyed a really good pan-fried steak and hit the sack after checking my emails. Today, on my shopping trip to La Belle, I covered 18 kilometers on a very straight section of the trail without the trailer. That's an abbreviated story of days 9 and 10 of my trip. If you want to continue your way southward on the saint Dunant Trail, join me next week when I publish the last two days on the trail, days 13 and 14. If you haven't done so yet, subscribe to my channel by clicking on the red icon at the bottom right of your screen. If you'd like some information about electric bicycle and bicycle campers, or if you'd like to buy my book, Sailor Without a Boat, go to my website, www.robertberio.com. Thank you for having accompanied me on my trip, and don't forget, never quit cycling.